He set benchmarks in design. He's curated some of the biggest exhibitions like the Festivals of India and Apna Utsav. But most of all, Rajiv Sethi is fetid for his consistently trying to find innovative ways of showcasing India's cultural heritage, of taking the local to the global. Let me present to you Rajiv Sethi, designer, scenographer, documentary filmmaker, theatre person, installation artist, and much more. <laughs> so Rajiv ji, I know you've been asked this question many times, but for our viewers, why did you choose design as your area of work? You know, there is no word in any of the Indian dialects that explains the word design. So I'm not quite sure whether I chose to be a designer. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed seeing processes, I enjoyed being a part of them, I enjoyed things taking form, becoming, being, the idea of making, doing. I never thought of them as design, because there are no words mm -hmm. to describe the word design. Where I started to analyze the creation of object or a performance and began to see a method in how to um, make it better, mm -hmm. answerable to experience, I think then perhaps I started to become a designer, mm -hmm. uh, but um, each time you create, you you think it's um, it's a constant beginning. It's for the first time. So to me, the distinction between art, craft, design, theatre. It's uh, really seamless. Uh, in the Vishnu Dharmotra Puran, they say that if you have to be an architect, you have to be a dancer. To be a dancer, you have to be a, a musician. A musician requires poetry, mathematics, and everything gets linked. Uh, but some of my very uh, legendary mentors people like Charles Eames or they always used to say everything connects. Kamaladevi Chattopadhyay always spoke about seeking related energies and uh, going from one to the other. Kupu Jaikar had a way of the eye and the spirit that transcended all these boundaries and bifurcations uh, that were very natural and very spontaneous, Zaj. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the designer word is there for communication. Right. But if, um, if we see ourselves as creative people, then I have no a socket Put, put myself in. into. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you just mentioned Pupul Jaikar and uh, Kamla Devi, Devi Chattopadhyay. Then you decided to go abroad and you s trained with Pei Kadeh and you yeah. trained with Charles Eames. Yeah, yeah. What is it that you took away from your international... Kadeh was about three years. Eames was brief. Okay. And Eames I was more like an eclavia. Um, you know, studying from a distance, talking, okay. seeing what he has done, imbibing mm -hmm. what it was, having the privilege of meeting him several times, getting it collected. But I never really 
worked in the studios very briefly. But mm -hmm. Karadhan was three years. So what was your takeaway from your international exposure at that time, when you were still at your formative years and learning? And you could be totally global by being extremely local. Mm -hmm. I understood what being an Indian uh -huh. meant. Uh, and by being Indian, I understood how you could be international. Mm. Okay. I, there was again those boundaries, boundaries blurred. Okay. And I think you seek quality. You seek a certain sense of involvement and uh, spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's wonderful that you have many prisms from which you you address the creative urge. Yeah. And uh, after a while, I stopped thinking whether I was You stopped segregating. Indian, no, I was, hmm. you know, trained abroad or, you know, I was training. I mean, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. oh, the day one stops to learn, one stops to breathe. Right. So. Um, and whether I'm in India, in a village, or I'm in uh, a palace, or I'm in, on a plane, or I am on the streets of New on York, the streets of New York <laughs> um, there is a point of reference which doesn't move. Right. Rajiv <laughs> ji, you've always been in the field of the creative world. How would you... Uh, sort of rewind to your creative process in the sense if, if I were to ask you what is it that you need to get inspired to create something or is it very very organic? From childhood I think the, uh, the process of making came first in, in my uh, realm of consciousness. I was always painting since the age of four. And uh, the act of painting became a bit like a performance. <laughs> okay. um, so, and I liked an audience. <laughs> oh, I see. Whether you it was would your paint in front of people. A lot, a lot. That I, cause the Shankar, Shankar's on the spot painting competitions, mm -hmm. which I think I must have started when I was four and went on till 16. And every year uh, uh -huh. there would be a lot of awards. I used to love it because it was a but of the exhibitionist in me, like <laughs> nothing would. Okay, okay. So every time the on-the-spot painting competition, right. if you had to come to the lawn with hundreds of children, thousands of children working, mm -hmm. I would be where there was a lot of crowd. And that's since I was four. And okay. then I think a painting became uh, related to making in terms of three-dimensional. And I would go to Janamash to me, for example, the Mela, and bring all lots of toys. We used to be very close to my house. Okay. Yeah, by the Billa Mandir. And then I would arrange them all over the house. So I think the concept of exhibition and design oh, came that's and rearranging the, uh, the furniture or everything that came from my, you okay. know, my um, expeditions. And I would organize them as I would do with my toys. Mm -hmm. So if there were blocks, I would not, I would break them, all the blocks and mm -hmm. change their shape and then to try and reconfigure them. So there was this uh, uh, growth on the, on the element of playing with form and 3D sculpture mm -hmm. came in also. Right. Uh, but it's hand. Mm -hmm. Hand, then a lot uh, on the body because dance came quite easily to me and I used oh, I love see. dancing. Okay. And uh, So did you train? Yes, I mean modern school, the school okay, I went to, okay. everybody trained. <laughs> okay, okay. We were, we were always, right, uh, you had uh, wonderful yeah, teachers actually. We had wonderful yeah. teachers, we were training. And they for music as well, Khasnagir was there and then uh, uh, Narendra Sharma ji was there for dance. This 
very well stocked library over the, I think it must have been built up over several decades yes, now about five decades but this is also again you know if you are on this side is all textiles and this side is the silk route going on from uh, China to you know to Central Asia and then further is contemporary painting inside I think it goes to design the other rooms are full of architecture and there is a huge spattering of politics are uh, my my youth in in the late 60s and early 70s in Paris where if you were not a part of the left yes uh, you were not you with were, it <laughs> you were nowhere you, who right, were you? right so that was all held on and uh, at that time, the theater of protest, the poetry of protest, the, the young who challenged uh, the very notion of what is considered art and right. what is considered uh, elite or what is considered for the people was, uh, was a seminal dialogue. Right. Uh, for our uh, viewers, mm -hmm. if we were trying to distinguish between art and craft, I know you said there aren't any boundaries, but just for the lay person, is there any way you would distinguish between art and handicraft? It's actually the lay people who've taught us that there is no distinction. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, it's only it's experts who try to demarcate ki khal ura utarna na. Mm -hmm. and um, a creative process does not have a boundary. I can go into an academic discussion with you on bifurcating art and craft, mm. but that's a colonial excess baggage. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to mm -hmm. dump that so on the wisdom of the so-called common man of this country? Because Never many times, itself, you know, people too. have this question in their head. Mm. Uh, okay, I'm going to get a piece of art or am I going to get yeah, handicraft? But like there's Kipling who did a, who was very instrumental in um, much that happened with the JJ College of Art. There is a lovely little ditty of his that Adam sat under a tree and he made a drawing with a stick mm -hmm. that gave great joy to his heart till the devil from up above in the branches whispered saying it's pretty but is it art? <laughs> so, you know, the devil, I think the devil always has a. Uh, is it also in the detail? Mm. And the pure joys of uh, experiencing the quality of life that comes from expressing. Uh, those are truly the more. Uh, they're more germane to. Anubhuti jisko kehte hain. Rasa jiske baare mein hum. But it's those are the, those emotions, those the rise, the sap, the rising sap of an aesthetic experience doesn't have these boundaries, at least in our part of the world. We 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 link up with all this. We but are, we have these departments of uh, you know the government. That's part of the colonial legacy. Right. right. Part of the colonial legacy. Yeah. They couldn't those people were so confused yeah. about the enormity of this other and uh, it didn't fall into the books as they would like us to study right okay. and uh, i think it's now de-schooling ourselves <laughs> to really get to who we are and who we want to be mm -hmm. and in that i think we have a message for the world when we started working in in all the villages of india uh, and especially with the festivals of India and all the others, we were making things, but they were not reaching the thresholds of those creative producers. And okay. we thought it was not empowering them. It may empower people like us, sitting where we were in the villages and cities, mm. uh, but not reaching their doorstep. So I thought the idea of uh, looking at the whole new craft activity must be he organizationally also bottom up. So we organized them into cooperatives and now they own a logo which I've been very privileged to be a part of called Geo. Now we're in their little 
domain. They, they never do embroideries, but these are all hand embroidered. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've never seen contemporary design. So young designers uh, uh, work with craftspeople to create contemporary uh, ideas for the global market, mm -hmm. connect, connecting the village mm -hmm. with the rest of the world. And these cooperatives are owned by the people themselves. So this, for example, is Bihar. This is uh, from uh, Venkatgiri and from Upala in Andhra yeah, Pradesh. Yeah. The foods, we are now making a whole lot of foods in Guntur. The women have organized themselves to create uh, collectives where they can, this, their everyday skill of making things for their homes mm -hmm. can uh, be packaged and stabilized in such a manner that they can have a market internationally. Then there is a, a Siki, which is from Bihar again. Women who used to make their dowry chests. Can they make chairs, furniture, lights, screens? This is Ikat from uh, Andhra Pradesh. So this search for the contemporary, using a language which is ancient, is the solution for India because it's the edge that India needs. And right. it's the only language that still is very healthy for India. So India, of course, we hope it becomes a superpower and shining India. But uh, in the IT sector, at the moment, we are only doing homeworks for somebody else. So we're like a Kuri tech. But this is where we have doing things that no one else can do. So in a knowledge economy, creating content is at the base of any work. Right. So you have to create content and you will have to empower those people with skills who are rapidly de-skilling, they're rapidly going, mm. to become complete, uh, you know, uh, 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 what we call masters of their destiny. Yesterday we met uh, Rajiv Sethi at his foundation and today we thought we'd catch him at his home, in his beautiful home, be beautifully appointed home, which he says he's just moved into six months ago. Uh, Rajivji, I thought I'd ask you about your experiences in having put up so many exhibitions and uh, your work at uh, building a museum. What do you think would be the prerequisites of setting up an institution or, a, or an exhibition? You know, what, what do you think needs to be taken into account? I think, um, you know, you have to start um, working if you have to, you have to have a vision statement. And you need to know who the museum is for and what does it contain? Who is it uh, going to maintain it? Who's going to run it? Uh, uh, what variety of activities and outreach do you plan for it? Uh, how is it going to be designed, the tangible part of it, the intangible part of it? Uh, and it's a very interdisciplinary exercise. And if you really want it to be more than just a, you know, a, a place a, a, with glass cases, with precious objects that you know, are all touch-me-nots. That's one kind. And then there are museums that uh, are going into the community, doing everything they can to bring the community into their doors. And there's a much intense interactivity. Uh, where, and the dialogue itself uh, changes from time to time, from accessioning to collections that come out for um, uh, to be shared so i think uh, there's no one set rule but you've got to you've got to remember that you're in the a museum is not for a short term right an exhibition could be for a little while a museum is a long term activity it has to have a constituency to which you address itself it has to have a very sound management systems put in place. It has to have a sense of um, context, of uh, 
a way to communicate, mm -hmm. a way to reach out. So all these things come together. But do you think uh, our premier uh, museums today are able to reach out and serve the purpose they were started no, out? The museum today? movement in India is relatively very, very young. Remember, we are living in a veritable museum. You walk out on the road, you're in a museum. So it's, uh, uh, but as an ajayab ghar, as a place which is to, to keep, to archive things that are otherwise khandit temples or broken and lying on the wayside, we, we do not um, have a sense of history and conservation. Yeah. We do not still see it as a, a wonderful adjunct to pedagogy where you know schools and colleges and their curriculums could have an extension in the kind of work the museum does. So I think the movement as museums will have to be if they have to justify the expense on them in a country like ours will have to be very inclusive. Mm. They can't be elitist activity. Yeah. And you have to find a program that helps you reach out to those who live in a very oral sense of history, who sometimes do not even know what the history is. They don't have access to it. So it's a point of reference for them. Mm -hmm. So neighborhood museums are very important. Right. in my scheme of things. National museums are. There are s certain things that you cannot put anywhere else but in an establishment like a national museum. But we need a neighborhood movement also. So there are museums at every level. As a center of excellence, as a center of reference, as a center for engagement, to know from here where do we go. Rajiji, what do you have to say about the commodification of art? Uh, say, for instance, you know, you have Manganyar singers uh, performing at a five-star restaurant where dinner is being served or snake charmers there doing their little bit of, uh, you know, a, lit a little performance somewhere. Yeah, I think if it's decontextualized and it's revel, it becomes a background material it's demeaning for the artist and I think it means very little to the audience also. Mm. But it's the flip side to this argument people say is at least kahi pe to unko mil raha hai. Uh, there's no reason why not give it. Platform. No reason why it can't be positioned in a manner that doesn't, uh, that increases the dignity as well as the communication value. Mm. No reason. I think this is all a question of presentation if I may use the word they like to use, packaging. Mm. It's a question of um, sustained dialogue with the living arts right. in a contemporary uh, milieu where uh, people's needs are different. Right. So I think one has to, inclusive it has to be. But, uh, greater markets for this is essential. Uh, exposure will lead to better methodologies of sharing. Among the many artifacts in your house, Rajivji, this looks very intriguing and fascinating. Why don't you tell us about this? Yes, indeed. This is uh, actually a, 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 a big uh, uh, sculpture come painting done by a very good friend of mine who's also made the moon, uh, a person called Andrew Logan and uh, my, my children including my three dogs, that's Pucci, that's Buri, and that's Buta, and my children Prabhu and Meera, and uh, there is Yadu, and that's Disha. Disha is around here somewhere, but she will come back at some point. So it's, it's a portrait, and it's got my sisters and their wedding. It's got my mother taking Gandhiji into the house. Before I was born, Gandhiji used to come and stay the only time he went to Kashmir, he came and stayed with my mother. Rajivji, how do you spend your time here in the house in the morning? What's your schedule like? I wake up to the sound of birds, or to my grandchildren who have to be 
got ready for school. And then I sort of go out into the garden, I, I count the new flowers, the flowers, uh, the fruits. We have mango, which was in full season uh, this year. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, ananas, we have, uh, we have uh, a whole crop of uh, guavas and, uh, and I've got to learn to talk to my plants. A lot of these I've planted myself. Uh, Rajivji, there was one question I wanted to ask connected with the work that you've been doing, which is on, uh, uh, you know, uh, providing a sustainable livelihood for artisans. Yes. You've worked in the area of microfinance for them. Yes. What has been your experience there uh, on that front? How do they sort of operate the accounts? Well, the idea, the, that, that is the whole purpose, yeah, yeah, sure. is to make them um, to educate the few that are not, that are slightly educated, to empower them to be able not just to maintain their accounts, but to do to take credit, to be answerable for the money that is being spent and being asked for and being earned. And uh, in all that, to uh, begin to see a sustainable livelihood. Otherwise, many of these skills that we are talking about didn't have any commerce linked to it. So Madhubani painter was painting Bhitti Chitra on the walls of their house. That lady was doing this as part of the ritual of birth, marriage, etc. But suddenly when she sees that she can convert that into a mobile wallpaper, mm -hmm. which has a market beyond her state in the whole world, you're making uh, local into global yeah. and I, the future is what we call global. Yeah. The, there has to be great relevance to skills in a new market that wants to uh, wants to be able to acquire original work that comes from the work of the hand. Yeah. The hand is very important here. I love this azan. We have a morning waking up with it, we have a evening knowing when to switch off and we normally sit here with my family to have my, there's my daughter-in-law, come here, come here, come here quickly. <laughs> That's my daughter-in-law and my son Prabhu, come here, beta. come here. They are my, my everything in life right now. <laughs>